What if I told you that the next market dip could be your biggest opportunity to build wealth? Well, this is true for every market dip. Be on the lookout for it. Have some dry powder of cash waiting on the sidelines to deploy once the opportunity presents itself. Now, the market doesn't need to crash for you to see an opportunity. And a few times a year, I see an opportunity. In today's episode, I will present you my top 10, 11 current opportunities for adding to your portfolio. What's that? What we forgot is better than whatever they remember. Don't ask them, what do we know? What I forgot is better than whatever they remember. Hi everyone, welcome back to Delta Code, where I share my 20 years of investment experience as an economist helping you reach financial independence just like I did. Today I'm going to dive in the, into the top 10 stocks that I would personally buy during this recent dip. These are stocks that I believe have potential for solid gains, especially in today's market and landscape. Some AI components to it, some interest rate sensitivity component to it as well. So if you're ready, let's just jump right in. You can see the list right here. It starts off with Google, also known as Alphabet. This is a no brainer. Google is a search engine that everybody uses. If you are on YouTube watching this, well, guess what? It's also Google. Google is also one of contenders to have the best AI because they have a ton of data and they've spent a lot on infrastructure. Next up, and these are in no particular order, just as they appear on my screen, the order filtered down is by market cap, so we're gonna go biggest to smallest. And of course, we can't forget Tesla, innovation in electric vehicles, and they have the first mover advantage in autonomous driving that makes them a no brainer. Now, the other contender is Google's Waymo when it comes to autonomous driving. But Tesla, in my opinion, is way ahead. Once you experience a uh, technology that Tesla produces, like the self-driving car or even just the plain old electric car they make, you can feel that this is a one-way street. We're not going back to combustion engines. We're not going to have people drive more. People are going to drive less. More cars are going to be electric. And Tesla not only makes electric cars, but they make the AI for self-driving. Also, they're getting into robotics. This is a whole other thing that's not proven yet, but they are a contender for it. The second order for Tesla is they also produce power through their solar uh, power generation, their solar roofs, solar panel technology, and storage, their batteries, which have a lot of synergy with cars being electric. As electric car demand goes up and people start switching more and more to electric cars, there's going to be ever greater demand on electric on electricity. And the only way we can supply this is with solar. We're not going to burn more coal. We're not going to use more gasoline. And nuclear, because of its application for weapons, has become a... No, no, because you can easily, if you can build a nuclear reactor, you can easily build a nuclear bomb. And seems like the Western world has decided to move away from nuclear just because they want to deter others from also building nuclear power. And then they can say, look, we're also not building it, which is fair. But I digress. Tesla, amazing in a lot of ways. They have the most data, most driving miles recorded data. They have the best self-driving so far that I've seen. Again, Alphabet, Google, close second. Number three on the list is Advanced Micro Devices, AMD. Now, AMD is a contender to take away NVIDIA's market share. We all know that in this AI race, NVIDIA is really the only clear-cut winner other than ASML and Taiwan Semi. 
AMD is has been proven to take away market share from Intel, for example, over the years. They started from the bottom and now they're here, worth, you know, quarter of a trillion. And I do believe they'll be worth a trillion in not too long. Now, with the AI development and all the chip development, AMD chips, particularly GPUs, are in high demand. And that as the AI race heats up, AMD is in a position to take market share from NVIDIA. And I believe if there, if it's going to be a duopoly or an oligopoly, it will likely be NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. Which brings us to Intel. We'll skip Micron for now. We'll go back to it just because we're on a chip roll for AI. Now, you might not be surprised to see Intel but they are quite behind in the AI race. And as I mentioned, the previous contender, AMD, has taken a massive chunk of their market share when it comes to CPUs. But do not overlook, this is a global phenom when it comes to my semiconductors. Currently, the semiconductor demand exceeds all the supply. And Intel has its own manufacturing capability to catch up. Unlike AMD and NVIDIA, Intel is also a fab. So AMD and NVIDIA only design chips, and then Taiwan Semi makes them. They fabricate them. Intel has the trifecta. They make and design the chips, which I think will be very powerful as we see more onshoring of chip manufacturing to the U.S., because Taiwan is a contentious geopolitical uh, fight with China, and U.S. wants to have ability to make chips onshore. So that's why there's the Chips Act that gave both you know, Taiwan Semi and Intel billions of dollars to make, to make fabrication plants in the U.S. Now, let's move on to the next one, which is Micron Technology. Micron is a key player in memory and data storage, especially when it comes to AI and cloud computing growth. Micron DRAM and NAD products are critical for AI applications, making an essential second-order beneficiary of this AI revolution. Regardless which software will win or which hardware when it comes to GPUs, all of these AI models and agents will need to store their inference or data somewhere that is readily available. So DRAM and NAD will be critical. And Micron is one of the best. The other one that comes to mind is Samsung, but Samsung is a Korean company that we don't have easy access to in the United States. So Micron is the second best. If you could have access to Samsung, that would be my first choice because of the synergy with the phones. All right, Intel. Now we're going to touch up on the last few and these have complicated implications for why they're on the list. First Coinbase. No brainer from, if you've been following me, from my perspective, Coinbase is extremely undervalued at $40 billion market cap. Now, interest rates are about to decline in the next week. Money is about to become cheap. The, the printer is about to go brr, 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 and we could see the dollar weaken. Maybe it will go up. Who cares? But we know that the supply of money will go up, perhaps more inflation. In times like these, hard assets like gold and crypto tend to perform well. Coinbase will benefit from increased crypto adoption, and it's a hedge for inflation and money printing. The crypto market is also at the major inflection point where we are on a brink of regulatory clarity or one of the presidential candidates might green light a lot of crypto things. Maybe both parties have seen the influence of crypto money 
which is one of the biggest super PACs, I think, in Washington. There's a lot of money to be gained by supporting crypto and nothing to be won to, from being against it. So I think finally, with all these ETFs, there's a lot of big money that's behind crypto now that benefits from it being adopted and growing in value. So there is no logical reason for politicians to stand in its way anymore. Okay, so also Coinbase is my biggest position in my portfolio, full disclaimer. Next one, everybody's favorite dating apps, Match. Match Group has a family of dating apps. It already dominates the market of online dating. But what excites me about this is their ability to monetize them, their massive user base. I think they can get really creative with some strategies and engagement to unlock other revenue streams from the trove of data they have. I think they're just sleeping on it. Match is the parent company that owns Match.com, Tinder, um, all the other apps for dating. Now, they they look good. I I can see it growing a lot from here. Only worth nine billion at the moment. Next up, Upstart. Now, Upstart is part of the highly shorted companies that will benefit from interest rates going down next week. Now you might have seen this video that I posted months ago, I think might have been in the spring of this year, that said, you know, look out for the following companies, Upstart, Redfin, Carvana, for interest rates start going down, these companies will benefit. Now Redfin has already seen a massive spike last week on Friday went up 25% alone. Why? Because this week, upcoming week, interest rates will be lowered. When interest rates are lowered, people buy more houses. Upstart does lending, helps with their AI platform. Their software helps lenders make good loans. So both Redfin and Upstart are real estate loan interest rate sensitive companies and they're highly shorted so we will dive into the financials of each company next starting off with google google's alphabet it was worth about a quarter trillion more recently now it's slightly under two trillion more reasonably priced than it used to be and the price to earnings growth is better now i mean this is just you know print money company so you know if your net income is close to 100 billion it's actually not bad not bad tesla however is a way more expensive company not as good of a price to earnings growth and it is profitable they make good money but tesla is all about the narrative of the future what will what will self-driving do what will robots do now amd is close to the peak valuation it was close to 300 billion now it's 250 so you know, a little cheaper than it used to be. Cheaper both price to earnings and a really attractive price to earnings growth. Now they're also, I think, just ready to pop. Micron is a 101 billion, 38%, 37% less than it used to be. Pretty reasonable price to earnings. Revenue looks nice. Revenue growth looks nice. I don't like this. This is not good. But overall, solid plus they're, they're one of the only games in town when it comes to memory for AI. Now, Intel 
Intel is just a bit of a shit show as of late, but price to earnings growth looks good. PE, forward PE looks reasonable. Right now, trailing PE is terrible. That's because they invested a lot into building a new fab. I'm not shorted, so people don't think it's gonna fail. Coinbase. At 40 billion, it was 64 not too long ago in March. So, you know, if it just goes back to that, that's a nice upside in itself. Price to earnings growth, ridiculously good. Little rich, but I think this is uh, not good accounting because of their crypto on books and how all that works if you don't know what i'm talking about check out one of my own coin many coin many many coinbase videos uh quarterly earnings growth revenue i think this will pop off in q4 and if 2025 is a good year for crypto which it's shaping up to be with all the crypto trends then uh we can see the revenue doubling I think they're looking good. They got seven billion on the balance sheet. Very low short float. Uh, who's shorting this? What idiot is shorting this? As I've said before, forty billion is ridiculously cheap for this company. I think this is a trillion dollar company sooner or later. Match a nine billion, also very cheap. Price to earnings, price to earnings growth, solid margins, great revenue. I, I don't know what you want from this company. This is a solid company. I am happy with all this. People shorting it, that's great too. Keep shorting it. We'll keep buying it. Now, this one. This is the only ETF in this pile of letters that I've thrown at you. And the reason I am putting this on the list, KWeb. This is the Crane Shares China Internet ETF. By buying this, you're buying all the awesome companies in China. You're getting yourself some Tencent, some Alibaba, some JD, some Pin, Pin Duo Duo, some Neti, some Baidu, so instead of betting on which one of these companies is going to pop off sooner or later or be fearful which one will be nerfed by the Chinese government, just buy the ETF. And I think if China starts firing all cylinders and it looks like they're expanding their balance sheet, which means they're injecting liquidity into the market, I expect everything to pop off. So. I used to have, and I still have, some Alibaba, some JD, lots of Tencent. And betting on these specifics, of course, if they pop off, great, like my Alibaba options. But it's also good to have a diversified all China ETF. You know, China is the upper comer, second biggest economy in the world. Do not underestimate them. Redfin, as I mentioned before, it just popped off. It popped off last Friday from 11 to 14. Our options are very happy. We have some 2025 and 2026 options that are all profitable now. And we have some Redfin shares. Redfin, if you don't know, Check it out. It's kind of like Zillow. Little different of a model, but similar. Upstart. Now this one and the next one are more speculative, but mostly because of this. Oh, let me, let me, let me show you Redfin. Let me show you the Redfin goodies. Redfin, check this out. 20% short of float. Upstart. 30% short of float. Coles. What? 
what 50% short of float okay so these are they're short interest rates about to drop which may just take the whole market up but these two specifically redfin and upstart and Kohl's is the most speculative but it's also the most heavily shorted the reason I am not all in on this one is this right here they have a lot of debt and and they're giving out a dividend that's crazy they're giving out two dollars of dividend it's a twenty dollar stock that's ten percent dividend but they have more debt than their company's worth like 3x it's crazy so overall solid company price to earnings very cheap they have some partnerships they don't look like they're gonna go bankrupt they have enough money to give out 10% of the value as dividend so they could just pause the dividend pay back the debt over time they may lose some uh, people that are buying the stock but I feel like it's irresponsible at this point to have this much debt and be giving out a dividend when the company's shorted this much I would actually just do a buyback I would just buy back I would sh squeeze the shorts just buy back the com shares it's insane you, you'll just make this pop yeah, honestly, buyback. Buyback is the strategy here. And Palantir, we're not going to look at. I took, I took a look at it. It looks nice, but it's a little, little, a little rich for my blood. A little expensive, and I don't see them as the company. This is not good also. You want this to be closer to one or less. All of this looks good. Looks good, you know, earnings growing. Everything is great, but not my cup of tea. Little overvalued. Over here, over here. This is a this was a good buy over here, maybe. Yeah, but here, no, no, I don't think so. No, thank you, thank you, bye. No, thank you. So that's the list. Here's the list. Obviously, Kohl's is a weird one given the high short interest and. K-Web is just the ETF to play the whole China market. Everything else, especially Redfin and Upstart, high short interest, interest rates going down, all good. Then all of these are in some way AI plays. Even Coinbase and Match. Match can use their insane amount of data, throw some AI on it, make some use of it. Come on, guys. Get your act together. Coinbase, you know, AI will want to use money. And AI cannot open a bank account, but it can have a digital wallet, and that is crypto. So that is mid-September ideas for 2024, end of 2024. Some of these AI plays, some of these interest rate plays, some of these highly shorted. And one of these is, hey, China's a thing. It's been beaten up. Maybe it picks them up. Who knows? All right. Well, there you have it. Those are the top 10 stocks and one ETF I am keeping my eye on or actively purchasing. Let me know in the comments which one of these you find most compelling or if you have ideas of your own, I would love to hear from you. Without the code, I do my best to share my 20 years of investment experience to help you become financially independent. To stay up to date, Make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, may the force of compound interest be with you. Peace. Peace. Peace.